All right, let's do the chapter nine problems. So number seven is about impulse, which is change in momentum. So I equals delta P, and delta is always final minus initial. So then we plug and chug and get 11 kilograms meters per second. Delta P equals F delta T. So change in momentum is always uh, impulse, which is M delta V and equivalent, equivalently F delta T. So we use F delta T here because um, we can just plug in what we know and get the force, which is one kilonewton. Um, now, I, I'm aware that the problem doesn't ask for the force, but that's a little extra that I'm asking you to do for this problem. Okay, number 18, we have uh, impulse again. F delta T equals M delta V. And uh, we're given the delta T, and we're also given the mass in the delta V, so we solve for the force, which is negative 1.6 times 10 to the fifth newtons. Now, we also need to find the um, final velocity um, in the context of this problem. So we know the initial velocity is zero, and then we also know gravitational acceleration. So we just plug in the time and get negative 39.24 meters per second. This is what we were able to plug into our delta V. Um, the final velocity is delta V because um, that's how much the velocity has changed from rest to the given velocity. All right, so um, number 33, I just asked you to do D and E. So D is 18 kilograms meters per second, and E is negative 9.0 meters per second because um, PF equals PI equals zero. That's the net momentum of the system. Okay, so once we found that, um, we can just, uh, well, that's really all there is to the problem. There's no uh, major steps involved. They just want to make sure that you understand that mass times velocity is momentum. So the setup is 2.0 V equals negative 18. All right, in uh, 39, we're asked to find that final velocity. And we know that momentum is conserved. So the final momentum equals the initial momentum, which equals zero. Now, in order for that to be true, um, the setup is that, you know, we have uh, one MV plus another MV. And so that's going to be negative 0 0.12 meters per second. Number 47, similar setup. PF equals PI. So 10,000 times 20 equals 10,900 V. Um, the 10,900 uh, comes from the fact that the mass has increased. Now, if the mass has increased, well, then, of course, the velocity needs to decrease and that ends up being uh, 18 meters per second. Uh, 49, we have um, PF equals PI equals zero, same setup, which means M1 V1F plus M2 V2F equals zero. And rearranging things to get V2F by itself, we have negative M1 V1F over M2. And at this point, we can just plug and chug to get 1.00 meters per second east. It is important to put the direction because um, this is a vector. Okay, going on then to uh, number 57. So M1 V1 equals M1 plus M2 V because what we have here is an inelastic collision inelastic collision. That's why we have to uh, combine the masses there, M1 plus M2. Uh, and then when we plug in our givens, we end up with um, the V1 being 4.6 times 10 to the second meters per second, or 0.46 kilometers per second. Okay, number 60 is um, we, we have an elastic collision. So the balls are heading towards each other, and then they bounce off each other. And when you have elastic collisions, really any collision problem, uh, it's really good to have a before sketch and an after sketch. 
it's the best way to do these problems. Uh, so the before sketch, we've got the uh, we've got one ball heading east and the other one heading west. We put in the given masses and velocities, and then we lay out our two equations, which uh, we can always lay out for elastic collisions. M1 V1I plus M2 V2Y equals M1 V1F plus M2 V2F. And then the relative velocity equation, V1I minus V2I equals V2F minus V1F. Remember that the relative velocity equation is just a consequence of the conservation of kinetic energy. Um, and that derivation I showed you in the video. Now the after sketch, we have the balls reversing directions. Masses haven't changed, of course. And, um, and they have the velocities of V1F and V2F. Okay, so at this point, then we really just, uh, you know, we plug and chuck. Um, we plug in the things that we know, and now we're going to solve for the things we don't know. Uh, for convenience, we're going to call V1F X, and we're going to call V2F Y. And so this is the uh, this is the system. Let me just remove that back page because that might be confusing. All right, so this is the system that we're going to solve. And when we uh, continue with the algebra and arithmetic, we end up getting that y equals 0 and x equals negative 30. Uh, therefore, v1f is negative 30 meters per second, and v2f is 0 meters per second. Okay, now number 62 is um, a type of ballistic pendulum. And so... Since we have a, a ballistic pendulum, we can use the same equation that we used in the lab. M1 V1I equals M1 plus M2 V loaded. Also, M1 time, I'm sorry, 1 half M1 plus M2 v, v loaded squared equals M1 plus M2 GH. Now, as I explained in the lab, the first equation comes from the conservation of momentum. The second equation comes from the conservation of mechanical energy. Okay, so V loaded ends up being root 2GH, and now we can just kind of put everything together. Um, keeping it as symbols is, is easier, and then putting numbers in at the end. Um, the reason that's easier is because there's less writing of digits. Okay, and finally we uh, have our plug and chug step, and we end up getting uh, 0.68 kilometers per second. All right, let's go on to uh, number 63. So um, for, for 63, our setup, or our before sketch, has um, the, the two objects going towards each other, right? And then our after sketch um, has them sticking together because this is inelastic. It's an inelastic collision. Momentum is conserved, kinetic energy is not. So the setup then is M1V1 plus M2V2 equals the combined masses M1 plus M2 times Vf. And uh, when we do our plugging and chugging step, we find that the Vf is um, 0.07 meters per second or 7.0 uh, centimeters per second east. Now, the change in kinetic energy, which we're also asked for, we just get that by, um, by adding and subtracting. Okay, so we compare the final kinetic energy to the initial kinetic energy. And um, what we find out is that there is a negative difference, meaning that our final kinetic energy is lower than our initial kinetic energy. This is something we expect because Kinetic energy is always lost in inelastic collisions. And that energy lost is um, 0 0.13 joules. So if we express an energy as negative 0 0.13 joules, that means that energy is lost. And if we express the answer saying energy is lost, then of course we don't need the negative sign anymore because that's what is meant by lost. Okay, number 66, doing more of these collision problems. So we've got our before sketch and our after sketch. 
and um, the 300 kilogram mass is initially at rest. And then after they both have velocities, but um, the setup is really still the same. Uh, it's still just, um, you know, relative velocities like the V1i minus V2i equals V2f minus V1f. And it's still just adding up the um, initial momentums as well. And that sets up our system of equations. Now, when we plug in our knowns and um, finish the, the solution, we end up with V1f being negative 5.00 meters per second. That's the satellite. And V2F is 5.00 meters per second, which is the asteroid. Now, if you do any of these in an easier, quicker way, just based on the proportions of masses and velocities, that's fine too. I won't take off any points in a test. But um, I'm showing you the, the way that works for every single collision problem, uh, just because I think it's good for us to get used to that, to that method. Okay, so in number 67, we have uh, balls of identical mass, and that's going to make things considerably simpler. Okay, so we've got our um, PI of negative 10M plus 15M, our, our PF of M, uh, V1F plus M, V2F. And um, notice how we bring those down, and we can distribute the M because we know that um, the masses are identical. So that simply becomes 5m equals m x plus y. Now we still have our relative velocity equation. That's why we have v1i minus v2i equals v2f minus v1f. And so negative 25 equals v2f minus v1f simplified to negative 25 equals y minus x. The rest of the problem then is just doing the algebra and arithmetic. And we end up with v1f equals 15 meters per second north and V2F equals 10 meters per second south. All right, now in number 69, they just want you to use symbols. All right, so if we refer to number 62, which we already did, we uh, were able to derive there that V equals M1 plus M2 root T 2GH over M1, where M1 is the mass of the bullet and M2 is the mass of the pendulum. All right, that's it for this problem set. Uh, hopefully the ex explanations and answers helped a little bit. I'll see you in class.